it depends where you're looking. So 100 is a global project, which is great. Um, I think we're at a bit of a tipping point, I hope we are, where it feels like there's a lot of momentum. So with 100, we've interviewed about 75 people now about what they think the future of education should look like. And what I found interesting is there's actually, the difficulty isn't deciding what it should look like. The difficulty seems to be with making it happen, and the difficulty doesn't seem to be with making it happen so much as convincing the very small percentage who still think we're doing it fine to let it happen. So I think we're getting to that point where we could just snowball and make it happen, whether that's the next two years um, or the next 20. I think technology is absolutely pivotal, actually. Um, in the sense that absolutely every aspect of our lives is taken over by technology, ways we don't even think about. So when I cook dinner, which I don't often, but if I did, I wouldn't so much get a recipe book anymore as I would look up a recipe online. And so I think on one hand, it seems a bit ridiculous to pretend it's not happening or even to, to give it any sort of special mention because it's so much a part of everything we do anyway. On the other hand, I think it's also a bit dangerous to see it as the be-all and end-all. I think finding some healthy mix of both technology and non-technology, and just living with it, actually, <laughs> really, just living with it, will we'll play a pivotal role in it. I think as soon as we stop having this conversation about whether or not tech's important in education, we'll be able to get on with just letting it be a part of education as it already is, really. It's a bit sad, really. Um, I'm, so I'm 27, and I didn't realize I had a brain until I was 26. I just didn't think I was capable of doing anything, really. Um, and I'm furious about that, which is partly why I'm so passionate about education, because I went through a school system that, because I didn't fit certain boxes, it's a very standard story, uh, but because I didn't fit certain boxes or operate the way everyone else did, I just sort of wrote, wrote myself off. Um, so I think that, for me, over the past year, realizing I do have a brain has been one of the more inspirational things, I think. Um, and then the other one actually comes from my dad, um, which is trust yourself, which I think is fantastic because more often than not when you're scared, you're scared that you're going to let yourself down. And if you just trust that you're not going to do that, it actually lifts a huge weight off your shoulder. It's easier said than done, but it's a nice principle, I think. risk of sounding cheesy, everything. It's crazy how Bet is such a staple in the calendar year when it comes to education. Um, but I love the conversations that comes out of it. I always think it's very interesting to think if you could sort of track a Bet baby, so to speak. So what's come out of people meeting here that, wasn't, that wouldn't have happened if they hadn't met here in this circumstance and this time. People just sort of hearing a talk, getting together, giving a card and what they then go on to do together. That endless possibility. There are, what, 40,000 people here? Something's going to happen because of this week that wouldn't have if, it, if this week wasn't happening. So, babies. <laughs>